In my early 20s, I was a musician on the road, playing music six nights a week and traveling on Sunday. And I remember this one club we played. It was in Saskatchewan, I think, and it was a pretty rough place. It had exotic dancers in the afternoon and we had music at night. I believe it was built on an ancient Indian burial ground. So it was kind of a decrepit building and it was, it was kind of a weird place. They gave us band rooms upstairs. So I had my guitars in there, I had my clothes, and I remember being in the room at night. And I remember the room very, very specifically because it was turquoise. It was kind of a dim turquoise hue. And there was a sink in the corner and it was dripping. And there was a light bulb, a bare light bulb in the ceiling with a chain coming down. I remember that. And three hooks on the wall. And on those three hooks, I placed my clothes. So I was lying in bed and I remember waking up gripped in fear. I turned on the light and I looked over at the three hooks on the wall where my clothes were placed and my clothes were on the ground. <laughs> so it, it scared me. Now, whether that was my imagination or not, I'm not sure. However, the feeling that I had was one of fear, deep fear. And I thought to myself, okay, so what is fear, Ken? The next day I went to a local bookstore and I started looking up the word fear. I found a book on meditation, and that completely changed my life. I started to go into meditation like I was just obsessed by meditation. Over the course of my life, I've read maybe, I don't know, 300 books on meditation from all different categories, Western psychology, Buddhism, Eastern mysticism, Hinduism, you name it. I've been reading about meditation and studying meditation. Today, I wanted to talk about the transformation from ordinary mind to awakened mind or clarity mind. If you like this video, Press the like button, share the video, and subscribe to my channel. That would be awesome. Ordinary mind can be defined as your typical mind, right? You come to the world impressionable, vulnerable, innocent, and your parents and society teaches you the rules of the road, and you learn, you study, you become a human, and you develop all these ideas and these concepts in your mind, judgments, belief systems, criticisms, ideologies, interpretations, representations, knowledge, 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 and it builds up. That's our ordinary waking state. What I'm talking about here is awakened mind. Now that's something a little different, isn't it? Awakened mind is clarity mind. It's a clear mind. So let's take a journey together. Imagine taking a walk with me and it's a cloudy day. And suddenly a gentle breeze blows by and the clouds lift and separate. And suddenly you feel the warmth of the sun on your face. We don't say, oh, the sun came out. No, we say we recognize that the clouds lifted and the sun came out. Well, the sun was always there, wasn't it? It was always present there. And that's your awakened mind. That's the true light of your being awakened mind, the shining light that's always present for you there. It's the ground of pure awareness, pure open awareness shining there for you. Let's talk about the things that block the awakened mind, the clouds that block the awakened mind, the clouds that prevent you from being aligned with the awakened mind all the time. So the three clouds are thoughts, identity and time. Thoughts, identity, and time. So the first one is thought. Now, you know, we really get wrapped up in thought. Everything's a construction of mind, and we have all these interpretations and representations. I really like that word because we represent thoughts in our minds, and we take ourselves really seriously. We identify with the thoughts that we think in our mind. It's a constant replaying of the tape in the mind of the kinds of thoughts we think. So meditation or no mind meditation allows us to take a break from the continual barrage of thoughts that we think in our mind. So that's the first cloud that needs to be lifted. And we practice that with concentration and with meditation, clearing the mind. And it's a beautiful process. It awakens the mind. So that's the first cloud. 
The second cloud is our identity. Now you're taking a walk with me. You notice a reflection of yourself in a plate glass window adjacent to a building that you're walking alongside of, and you see a reflection. And that reflection is Ken. It's your Kenness. It's a concept you have of who you are, and you can separate yourself. You can put yourself aside for a little bit. And that's a great concept because we don't have to get rid of Ken completely, but we can just put your identity, your ego, aside for a little while. And that's a great pathway toward awakening, isn't it? Now, the other day somebody asked me, okay, Ken, what's your greatest fear? And I told them, I said, my greatest fear is death of the ego. And we're always worried about the identity that we built up because we deem it so important, don't we? The identity that we think we are, the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves, the narrative that continually plays on in our minds. Well, I'm a guitar player, I'm a musician, I'm a meditation teacher, I'm a coach. Those identities are just temporary illusory qualities, aren't they? They're not who we really are, but the roles we assume. And But we really buy into them. We really get lost in the thought that those identities are who we are. So we're afraid of losing our identity. And the death of the ego is probably our greatest fear. No self or anatta in Buddhism is uh, what everybody's afraid of and, and how to live there. And the funny thing is you can live there because it's kind of like falling out of a plane without a parachute and you're falling. As you keep falling and you fall and you fall and you let go and suddenly you realize there's no ground below. So you can fall. When we are able to separate ourselves from our identity, we have a greater freedom in the mind, and that big cloud of identity, cleaned up of self, is no longer there. And it's freeing. Now, the third cloud that prevents us from seeing the wakened mind is time. Now, we're walking along the road, and we meet up with a pretty girl. Now, if you sit for an hour with a pretty girl, time goes by in an instant, doesn't it? But if you're working at a job that you really hate, boy, does time drag on, doesn't it? You're looking at the clock, looking at the clock, and boy, it just seems like forever. So time is psychological, isn't it? Time is an illusion. It doesn't exist. It's a man-made construct. Once again, time is a construction of mind. So even Einstein said that time doesn't exist. We live in this time-bound illusion. When we're in meditation, we experience timeless awareness. The same when we're in flow states, where we're in our peak performance place, where we're in the zone or in the pocket. Time doesn't exist. Or when we're surfing, right? We're having such a good time. We're in timeless awareness. Or when you're doing something fun, you're in timeless awareness. The third cloud that prevents the awakening mind is time. And time stresses us out. So we can release our attachment to time. More often than not, we still need time, you know, to make schedules and do things in life, of course. But time can be released in meditation and we can experience timeless awareness. And that brings about a great realization, a great opening up to open awareness so that we can see the light of our awakened mind. In conclusion, clearing out those three clouds can bring about a great deal of awakening, and you can live in that. Now, you finish taking your walk, you go up to your car, and you unlock the car, and you go in the car, and you notice, hey, there's road dust on my windshield. So you press the mister, and you turn on the windshield wipers. The windshield wipers clean off your windshield. That's the fourth final key to stable awakening to continually clean the windshield. It's a maintenance thing, right? In Buddhism, they call it sanskaras. In Hinduism, they call it samskaras. But really, they're just mental impressions or reifications or objectification or representations or interpretations where we play them over and they become hardened. They're like a dogma, a belief system, and they become stronger. When we're vigilant using mindfulness, we can be more aware 
of the kinds of thoughts we think, and we can lighten up a little bit. Don't take our identity too seriously. Relax a little bit with life, surrender a little bit with life, and clean off the windshield on a regular basis. It's a maintenance thing. It's vigilance. It's mindfulness, bringing attention to the present moment awareness without judgment. We just notice it and it's, it's kind of like writing on water, right? That's a good metaphor. You write on water and you know what? You write, write something on water and it doesn't really take, right? It just liquefies, it's gone. And that's what you want to do with your life, being more light and not taking things too seriously. It's like writing on water. You maintain that mindfulness, that vigilance to the kinds of things that go on in your mind so that you can be lighter with it. You're really introduced to stable awakening and you can live in there for longer periods of time. If you like this video, I have another video you might enjoy called How to Get to Know Yourself in Eight Minutes or Less. Just follow the link.